what is up youtube it's josh creates man we have another tiktok video about inflation in this video it's about whether living rural urban or suburban costs more or costs less which one costs more and costs less which one is best to live for job opportunities uh, uh close uh grocery stores best best overall place to live that's all i'll say so without further ado let's get right into it if you want to save money where should you live obviously urban areas are expensive but generally wages are higher to match it's cheaper to live in a rural area but wages are lower and then suburbs are somewhere in the middle Facts. the bureau of labor statistics runs a consumer expenditure surveys and these look at how much money people make where they live and how they spend it so looking at some of the consumer expenditure data you can see households in big cities you know this area make more money than households in smaller cities or suburbs and then the rural areas are somewhere in the middle but if you take expenses into account you can see this is the um, income minus expenses and then you take that number as a percentage of the original income you can see the big cities are still on top it's probably because people in these cities who can't afford to live there get pushed out into these areas so to answer the question I posed at the beginning, if you want to save in a rural area, try the upper Midwest. And if you want to save in an urban area, Pittsburgh is the place to go. So thanks for watching. Pittsburgh? Crazy. I would say the biggest difference between living in the city and living in the suburbs would be price per square foot. So uh, typically you'll get a little bit more for your money in terms of space in the suburbs. Uh, should, should make sense to most of you. Um, if you're living in the city, uh, chances are you, you quite possibly could be living in a condo, especially you know in, in an in a environment like Chicago, in the suburbs of Chicago. You, you know, if you're living in the loop, um, there really are no single-family homes, so it's got to be condo living, apartment living, um, or, or nothing. So. This diagram illustrates the differences between urban, suburban, and rural areas and why urban areas are the most sustainable city model for the most amount of people. If you want to live in a less dense city, it's most likely going to collect less tax revenue, which means you get less infrastructure, less paved roads, less power stations, and less public water systems. This comes with its own set of problems because institutions like schools and hospitals are severely underfunded in rural areas, so they're often subsidized by both urban and suburban cities. If you want to live in a more dense area, the city's most likely going to collect higher tax revenue, which means you get more sustainable infrastructure, commerce, transit, and relatively lower taxes for what you're getting out of them. Even if dense cities get more tax revenue back from the state than they pay per dollar, those areas also house way more people and provide way more economic productivity than their suburban or rural counterparts. Although it's true that many low-income urban neighborhoods are worse off from being de facto segregated from wealthier neighborhoods. Then you have people in the suburbs who want the low density of rural areas and the stable services of urban areas all while paying lower taxes. And that does not exist. Not only does it not exist, but even with the high taxes that suburban property owners pay, they're still often subsidized by surrounding urban taxpayers along with state and federal funding. Because the primary usage of highways in between cities and suburbs is by suburban property owners who use them to commute for work or pleasure. And because suburbs demand more sprawled out infrastructure development, which becomes more costly to maintain over time. So yeah, a lot of suburban property owners think they can have their cake and eat it too. Until the time comes to pay the bill and the town either goes broke or just keeps perpetuating sprawl to stay afloat. And neither of those are great. Okay, you guys, so I used to live in Miami and I used to pay $3,000 for a one bedroom apartment. And then I came up with this idea of leaving Miami and moving to a smaller town that had less expensive rent, thinking like, oh yeah, I can go save my money, yada yada. But let me tell you something. I think I played myself. <laughs> let me explain why. Okay, so first things first, after moving to the small town that I now live in, I don't have a car because, hello, I'm from New York, like, we used to take the train everywhere, like, what is the car? And then when I lived in Miami, I lived in the city, so I could just grab an Uber and be anywhere in, like, 5-10 minutes. But now that I live in Jacksonville, that is a very suburban town, you need a vehicle to move around. And I haven't, you know, wanted to get a car because I'm thinking, like, why would I spend what I'm saving on rent in a car? Like, basically what I came here to save, now I'm going to spend it in a car. That makes no sense. I might as well just stay in Miami, right? So, not only that, but let me let me put you on real quick with, like, actual numbers. 
because I don't have a car, I have been doing my groceries through Instacart. And as you guys know, I'm sure you guys know, Instacart is a business that needs to make profit. So, of course, they're going to mark up the items that you would normally pay, let's say, $2 for. They're going to sell it to you for $3.50. They got to make money. I understand that, all right? But when I lived in Miami, I lived in a building that literally had Publix on the first floor. I used to go to Publix for fun. And I still never spent this much on groceries. Like, the most I ever spent on a monthly basis going to Publix for fun, because it was right in the building that I lived in, was like a good $500, $400 a month. But now that I've been ordering through Instacart, I do the same exact purchase I used to do before, and it's costing me like 10 times as more. I'm talking about, I'm spending like $700 to $1,000 on groceries for the same exact things I used to buy back when I lived in a building that had Publix downstairs. So it's obviously, I'm paying for the markup, right? Now, before you come at me and say, just get a car and do your own shit. And then I'm going to pay the car payment, the car insurance, the gas, parking. It's going to be about the same, technically speaking. And now I'm just thinking to myself, like, I think I just played myself. You know, <laughs> having left a major city where everything was conveniently close to me and then just paying high rent versus now paying lower rent but living in a small town where it's costing me more to get the same things you know whether i'm spending it on instacart or having you know a car like the cost of having a vehicle i, I honestly think i just played myself and so and that is why i wanted to hop on here and talk about it just in case any of you guys are feeling the stretch of like oh, I live in a major city, it's expensive, I'm going to move to a small town. These are things you got to consider. Like, <laughs> not only that, but flight prices are more expensive. Because since it's a small town, the airport is not as popular. Like JFK or Miami Airport. So, for example, a flight from Miami to, let's say, Dominican Republic on a good day can cost you, like, three to $400. A flight to DR from Jacksonville is, like, a good 600 to $900 with a layover in miami like i honestly think i played myself and this is just crazy to me like i'm not even gonna go crazy because at the end of the day you live and you learn you know i'm still in my 20s i still have a lot to figure out but like they're gonna pay you less. i get it i get it now i know that was long but first and foremost yes three thousand dollars for a one bedroom in miami is overly crazy Second, yes, when you move to a more like suburban area, you do have to rely on your car more. Um, but if, like she said, she said, uh, you, with a car, you have to worry about car payment, car insurance, and car maintenance. See, that's the thing where people don't get, and not just me, but other creators that make these type of videos always say, don't get a car where you have to make a car payment. There's three payments. The hidden payment that people don't really understand is the sorry, is the car maintenance. So when you have a car payment, car insurance, and car maintenance, you're so focused on making the car payments that you're not really focused on the car. No, you're so focused on yeah, making the car payments that you're not focused on making the uh car maintenance. That that's the crazy thing about it. This is what uh, people don't get. Yes, it's kind of hard to juggle where you want to live. A suburban area would be better because it's more like quieter and, you know, b b better space and all that stuff like that and compared to like urban areas where it's more like uh, noisy. Uh, privacy is not really like a, a thing down here or like any urban area. Um, but you are close to things where you can get things done faster in a day within a day, like a certain amount of time. I could say that I live in South Florida. Uh, transit is good, like uh, transportation other than a car is is, is very good. Uh, you have like multiple gas stations close to you. You have multiple uh, tire shops, mechanic shops close to you. It's a very much benefit, but you look at things like you compare it to like, uh, uh, like there's more are there more potholes in the urban area? I'll say so. I'll say so. It's a downfall. It's more expensive. Like gas is more expensive 
in an urban area than suburban area. You understand? Like things like that, that's also important. So no matter what, I don't think we could, you could escape not spending too much money. I don't think so. Because even if she does come back and live in Miami, like, yes, those things that you obviously uh, knew that were better for you uh, will still be expensive. Then you're going to complain again when you get down here and say, hey, I wish, you know, I, I had this, that, the next, I, I, you know, everything, the pros of living suburban. So to sum it all up in conclusion, you can't run away from expensive stuff in America. Yes, and your rent is going to be $2,000. So I've been trying to explain to people that you cannot outrun the cost of living going up. Exactly. Eventually, everywhere in the U.S. and everywhere in the world, the cost of living is going to go up so much that you're really not going to be able to get by with minimum wage. So the best thing for you to do is to try and increase your income through your career, whether that's in tech or whether that's insurance adjusting or if it's healthcare or anything like that. But if you can try not to go in too much debt and not have to go back to college for it, that's the best way to increase your income quickly. So keep that in mind because I was able to move here to Atlanta because I work a remote job and I'm still making six figures here in Atlanta. So you got to get your income up so you can live wherever you want and live the life that you want to live. So make sure you follow me for more tech and career tips. Told you. Even today, people believe that suburban development brings prosperity. It's the American dream, right? The idea that you build these and that country prosperous just not the case yeah uh, it's really really that it's exactly the opposite it's that these places are making uh, americans poorer and, oh well yeah yeah i agree i agree like you're paying like big property taxes bro compared to like a more urban area where it has houses yeah you're paying like big property taxes dog and it sounds good. It's it's the American dream, like to live in a suburb. Suburbs here, suburbs there. You hear everyone say it out their mouth. Suburbs, suburbs, suburbs. But people don't want what the suburbs come with, as far as like uh, financial financial reasons. It's a lot. It's a lot. Trust me. I heard it down here. I heard uh, real estate agents, house flippers. They always say like, bro, it's so expensive to like flip a house in the suburbs. And yeah, yeah, it's a lot. So that is it for this video, man. Uh, if you like it, man, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section down below whether you live in an urban, rural, or a suburban area, and how are your finances? What's uh, like? What's expensive? What's not? What you have to do? I know, like with uh, uh, in the suburbs and rural areas, you will most likely have to like cut your cut the lawn. Whether you cut the your own lawn. Or you have somebody else to come and do it for you. If that's an expense. If that's, you know. Let me know, bro. Let me know. Uh, yeah, needless to say, everything will be okay. My name is Josh Creates. I'm out.